again, it's good to be back with you. Last couple of videos I've done were on differential equations and just kind of an introduction. Well, they seem to be going over pretty well, so I thought another one might be a good idea. What I'd like to do now is talk to you a little bit about how to solve differential equations. Now, what I'm not going to do, at least not in this video, is go through all the different methods. Rather, what I'm trying to get you to do in this video is just understand what all these different methods are, how they fit together, and which one you should pick. What are the advantages and disadvantages? So I need a differential equation to work with, so I just made this one up. This is a first-order differential equation where I've got the first-order derivative there, and I've got a very simple function on the right-hand side. Now, the goal here is to find a function y of x that when you substitute in here makes this true. Also, it has to go pass through this point. So what happens is this equation right here defines a family of functions. When you pick the function that, def that goes through that point, you've, near you've gone from a family of functions down to one specific one. All right, so when you're talking about solving differential equations, there's really two flavors of solution. One is called an analytical solution. And the other one is called a numerical solution. Okay? And it's really important to know what the difference, uh, difference is between those two. When you're finding an analytical solution, what you're finding is a function. You're actually going to find y of x. Okay? And y of x is going to be a, an algebraic function. The mathematicians would call that a closed form function. You can actually write that down. And uh, when, in writing that down, you can, you can uh, plot that out to as much precision as you want. It's basically analog. When you're doing a numerical solution, what you're doing is you're executing a computer algorithm, usually on a computer. I guess maybe in class or something you might do it by hand, but almost always on a computer. And what you're coming up with is a list of points. If you plot those points, you get a picture of whatever y of x is. This is a, sol a solution, a function you can substitute in. This is not. All right, this is not a closed form solution. It's a picture of the solution. Well, it depends on what you actually need. If you just need a picture of the solution, maybe you can interpolate between points on that plot. This will get you so close to that that you can't tell the difference. In practice, most of the time, certainly when you're working on computers, this is almost always what you're doing. If you're doing a finite element analysis or a computational fluid dynamics or something like this, this is probably what you're doing. Although, this may be built into the derivation of the algorithm that makes that lets you figure that out. All right. So if you're doing analytical, there's actually another uh, distinction you can make. You can do an exact or an approximate solution. All right. So an exact solution is just what it sounds like. I'm going to find a function y of x that exactly solves that and exactly goes through that point. Well, that can be pretty tough to do for some equations. Another way to do it is, well, I'm going to find an approximate solution. This is akin to doing a curve fit. Well, I don't, if I don't know what the form of that is, I'll make up an equation that's flexible enough. It can take a lot of different shapes and will have some unknown parameters in them. I'll select those parameters so that's, that it solves that equation as closely as possible. It minimizes an error. All right, now, these, the, all these different solutions um, are usually named after the people who have developed them or proposed them. So for the numerical solutions, you may have an Euler method or a uh, runge kutta method. If you, heard of, if you are looking through the books and you see something called a fourth order runge kutta, that's a pretty popular one if it's a numerical solution. Analytical, there's all kinds of, of, of uh, names involved. Approximations, you can find Ritz or Rayleigh Ritz or there are some others. So when you hear all these names, as far as I know, they all fit into one of these categories right there. Now, there's one specific kind of solution, one specific kind of equation, rather, that allows you to just integrate directly to find a solution. Now, these are by far not the most common, but you do see them. And sometimes when you see them, it turns out that the solutions are pretty helpful. Um, if you have an equation that's called separable, you can just integrate directly. This is a separable equation. I made this up to look like this for a very specific reason. A separable equation looks like this. OK, this is how a mathematician might write it. And like mathematicians do, that's very tidy, it's very compact, and it's very precise. If I can write an equation that has x as the independent variable and y as the dependent variable, put a slope on one side, or sometimes this is a higher order derivative. And on the right-hand side, I can have 
a function of my independent variable times a function of my dependent variable, that's a separable equation. Well, g of x is y squared, and f of x is sine x. That means I can integrate directly to find the solution. And here's how a separable solution works. Remember, dy and dx, those are just variables. Now, they have some very particular properties. Okay? We'll never know exactly what they are. They're infinitesimally small. So we'll never actually be able to assign a number to them. But we can push them around like we can any other variable. Also, to make them go away, we're going to have to integrate. Well, I can do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide through by y squared, and then I'm going to multiply through by dx. So what I'm going to get is this. Sine x dx. OK, this is looking a whole lot less scary right now. It looks like I might just be able to integrate both sides. Well, of course I can. That's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to integrate, and I'm going to integrate. Now, I can do this two ways. I can integrate uh, in an indefinite way like this, and then use this to solve for the uh, constant of integration. Or I can just put the limits right in, since I really kind of know what they are. y goes from 1 fourth to y, and from 0 to x. Okay. Now, I, the, uh, I'm not sure that notation is strictly kosher, but it does work. So my apologies if a math, math, uh, mathematician or math professor tells, to use, to, tells you to use a dummy variable. Um, but I know that the beginning of this problem happens when y equals 1 fourth. And I don't know where the end of it is. So I'm just going to leave that as y so I can uh, come up with a function. I know that x equals 0 is the start. So I'm going to go from 0 down there up to x. And when I do this, make sure I'm, I get this right here, I'm going to get minus 1 over y from the one to, going from 1 fourth to y. I want to integrate that. And this is going to be, let's see, minus cosine x, I think. Let me double check here. Yep. This is the kind of day where I would mess up something simple like this. So I'm going to double check on my little cheat sheet there. OK. Well, now this is just algebra. It's not really calculus anymore. We've already gone, gone through the integration. So what I can do is go ahead and evaluate this at the limits. And if you do that, what you come up with is y of x equals 1 over 3 plus cosine x. And that is indeed the solution. If I substitute that into this, I find out that it's true. So. Let's stop right there. What we've done now is we've learned about the classifications of solutions, whether they're uh, exact, analytical, or numerical, and shown how to, how to identify one particular kind of solution from a separable differential equation. If the equation is separable, we can just integrate directly and come up with an answer. Hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.